Hi, I'm Jenny Kleiss, and today I wanted to share with you some of the ways that you can strengthen your breath. And not just all the ways that we've practiced pranayama and yoga, but strengthening your breath in general. So once you leave your yoga studio, once you exit your yoga practice, you're still breathing in a way that helps support a healthy immune system, better blood pressure, heart rates, uh, good stress response and getting just so much more oxygen into your bloodstream and all the amazing benefits that come with it. So one of the main areas of focus that I wanted to share with you guys today is how to work on your diaphragmatic breathing. And before we begin, I just wanted to explain the diaphragm muscle. So it's sort of this funny dome-shaped muscle just below the lungs. And what happens is when we activate the lungs by breathing in and they expand, there are different muscles working. The diaphragm muscle is going to release down in theory so that it's gonna compress the lower organs of your torso so that there can be room for the lungs to expand. What happens is we're born these beautifully breathing babies and it comes second nature to us to breathe into our bellies and not even think about it. But as we get a little bit older, as our levels of stress tend to pick up and we start to develop bad posture or a variety of things, tight muscles, the diaphragm muscle can get locked. And what happens is if your diaphragm is tight or locked when you're breathing, it can look kind of like this. And this is because the, there's no room for the lungs to expand downward, so they're going up, which can lead to neck tension, less oxygen getting into the bloodstream, and higher stress levels. So we're gonna start really simple with a belly breathing technique. And all of these techniques are ones that have a little bit of feedback, whether it's the props or using your hands as props or even a partner to help you. So it's gonna give you feedback. It'll be a great resource for you. And you might find a technique that works best for you and just stick with it. You know, you don't have to practice every single one of them every day, but see if you can work towards some of these so that you don't have to think about it to get your breath to move in this way. And over time, it'll just happen naturally for you. So we'll begin sitting and you can sit uh, kneeling or cross-legged. I like to sit up on a block because it helps me to untuck my tailbone and it gets my hips positioned at knee height or a little bit higher. So it takes some of the pressure off of my knees. So I'm already setting myself up for success, a nice tall posture so that I can create more room in my body for the lungs to expand. So we're gonna start with belly breathing. And what you're going to do is you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna place them on the belly. Relax your shoulders down your back and smile across your collarbones. You can close your eyes or find a soft downward gaze. And just take these first few moments to just notice your natural breath. Before beginning any breath exercise, just find that practice of self-study. Where are you at in this moment? Is your breath shallow? Is it expansive? Where do you feel the breath and what parts of the physical body most predominantly? Eventually, you'll switch to sealing your lips and breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. Perhaps working to find some equanimity between both halves of the breath. So if you're breathing in for a count of four, exhaling for a count of four. And this has uh, been shown to reduce stress levels, bring the heart rate back down as an added benefit. Now I want you to be 
feel the palms on the belly. And as you take your inhale, feel the breath so that the belly is expanding into the palms of your hands. Don't be afraid to stick your belly out. And as you exhale, feel the palms of the hands gently steering the belly back towards the spine. Inhaling, belly expanding. Exhaling, belly is softening. Over time, as you get more comfortable with this breath technique, you might decide to switch it up a little bit by taking one hand to your belly and then bringing the back of your other hand to your low back. And in this scenario, you not only want to feel the belly expanding into the palm of your right hand, but you also want to feel almost the low back expanding outwards as well to create space, having a ballooning effect. Inhaling, the lower half of the torso is expanding in all directions. Exhaling, the lower half of the torso is coming back in around the spine. And then stick with this breath. Try to work up to five, 10, 15 minutes. The longer amount of time you have, the more you have to benefit, the more you have to gain integrating that muscle memory, creating new neuroplasticity for the way you breathe. And 15 minutes out of your day really isn't that much time at all. So I would like to go to another breath technique that you can do seated and you can do it standing as well, but I find that finding a comfortable seat helps you to relax your muscles the best. So you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna bring your three middle fingers to your rib cage and your thumb to the back side of your rib cage. So we're gonna do what I call, or what I've heard called intercostal breathing. And if you're unfamiliar with your intercostal muscles, they are the muscles that are actually in between each of your rib bones. So the rib bones anatomically are referred to as the costal bones and they too are working. So you're gonna bring your fingers around the ribs. Usually I let the pinky finger float free that, so that you can keep the elbows out to the sides. Okay, so we'll start by finding our nice elongated spine, relaxing the shoulders down our backs. And this time as you're breathing, I want you to feel the ribs moving out to the sides. You're gonna feel the pads of your fingers pressing into the ribs just gently or resting on the ribs as the ribs expand into them. Breathing in and out of your nose. Actually 
come down onto your belly. So anytime our belly is down, we call it prone position. And so this is a prone breathing technique. So you come onto your belly. And a lot of people have their own preferences as to how they like to lay on their belly. So some of you may like to just rest your forehead on the tops of your hands. Some of you may prefer to let one ear fall to the mat and bring your palms face up by your sides. And if you take this version, just be sure to switch sides. So for however many breaths you take on the side with your gaze, go ahead and do it on the other side so that your neck feels nice and even out because you know, the neck muscles, the scalenes are involved in the breath as well. So I'm gonna take the version with my head on my hands. I think it'll be easier to hear me from here. Now, what I want you to do as you're starting is to just feel the connection points between your body and the support of the floor beneath you. And I want you to specifically start to move your awareness to the belly and the low back region. Same as before, as you're breathing in and out of your nose, I want you to start to feel the belly expanding. And what's gonna happen is when the belly expands towards the mat, there's gonna be that pressure or force there that's pushing back at the belly. And what this does is it causes the low back to have to rise and expand. And I really love this breath technique because it allows the rest of the body to just completely relax. And you can keep your shoulders melting down away from the ears because you're supported the whole body on the mat. So we'll start in this nice, relaxing prone position. And I'm gonna inhale and visualize my breath coming into my belly. Exhaling, softening. And it's subtle, but you may be able to notice my low back rising a little bit with each breath. allowing me to direct where I want to breathe. Because sometimes when we're just sitting, we don't have any contact with the areas of the body that we're trying to breathe into and trying to open up. It can become more challenging to locate them just with our mind. And I know it sounds silly and it might seem easy enough, but the breath, just like anything else, is something that we need to practice as we get older. It's something that we sort of lose that skill or the same quality that we had when we were babies. And um, the breath is something that it doesn't really matter how many times a day that you do it. What matters most is how you do it. Because you know you're going to be breathing all day long. Why not make each and every one of them a quality breath? All right, so you guys are gonna like this next one. You're gonna lay on your back. We're gonna come down onto our backs. And for this one, you can use a weighted prop. So for the purpose of today, I'm going to use this block, but if you wanna use a folded yoga blanket, if you have a little bit of more weighted pillows or blankets at home, you can use those as well. Now you can have your feet planting down, but if you want to just take a Shavasana, extending your legs out long, you can. And you're going to take your prop, so I'm going to take my block for today, and I'm going to place it just below the ribs and above my hip points, the AF 
thigh rise. Good. I'm going to rest my hands face up by my sides. And I'll just note that you can practice hands on belly breathing here as well. But I love the use of this prop because it allows the arms just to completely relax. So really the breath is the only thing that deserves our attention, our focus, our powers of concentration, and we can really hone in on it. So again, you can close your eyes or find a soft gaze. Coming back to breathing in and out of our nose. Drawing our awareness to the belly, feeling the weight of our prop on the belly. Anchoring our awareness on the breath. Now as you inhale, you're gonna feel the belly rising into this resource here, the prop. So you'll inhale, feel the prop rising. Feel the prop softening down. So it's a very gentle weight, but it informs the breath. Inhaling. from other muscles trying to compensate for the action of the breath or holding or maintaining my posture. So this one is one of my absolute favorites. And you, know, you could come into this even after a yoga class, after having taken your Shavasana, you can come to this and just take an extra five or 10 minutes here. All right, so we've gotten through four techniques so far. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is a prop that's less obvious, or a resource, I should say, that's less obvious. It's going to be the power of visualization. So oftentimes we rely on the more obvious senses to help us guide our breath, whether it's noticing the smell, the texture, the temperature, the feeling of our breath. But we can also use our mind's eye, we can use our imagination to help get us to where we want to be with the breath. So, a few that I found helpful when I'm teaching or just in my own practice that I've picked up over time is imagining that maybe your torso is like a jellyfish. Every time you breathe in, it's expanding in all directions, just like a jellyfish would swim through the ocean. And every time you exhale, it softens back in, but it sort of propels forward. So your crown of your head still lifting up as everything softens in towards the spine. Another one that I found really helpful is imagining the spine is an elevator shaft. And as you breathe in and the belly is expanding, you can imagine an elevator or a globe of light moving down the spine. And as you exhale, feeling that moving all the way back up the elevator shaft. So you're visualizing the journey of something moving up and down your spine with the assist of your breath. And that helps to move the breath all the way down and all the way up. All right, and then another useful technique that I found helpful when I'm teaching classes is to imagine your breath is kissing something. And I know that sounds silly, but let's say you were in a 
tabletop pose. Finding a nice neutral spine, I'm gonna imagine that my belly button is now trying to kiss the mat. So as I inhale, the belly expands outward. Now as I exhale, the belly is gonna to try to kiss the spine. three visualization techniques, but there are thousands of them out there. And I really encourage you to check them out. I think that they can be a really powerful tool for guiding your breath practice. And they give you an opportunity as well to tap into your powers of imagination, which is always very fun to do. And I also just want to circle back to that kissing analogy of the breath. I think a lot of times our diaphragm can also get locked because let's be real, let's face it, um, as a culture, we prefer to hold our belly in. And especially if we're in a yoga class, especially if we're in any health and wellness or fitness related activity for at the gym, we simply don't want to let our bellies just expand into space, but really it's such an important part of the breath. And don't be afraid to let your belly like come out in space. If anything, you're strengthening all of those muscles even more so by doing so. Okay, so for this last little technique, I'm gonna need you to get real imaginative with me because it would be an exercise that you actually want a partner with. So I have an invisible partner today, but I can explain to you what we would be doing. The person breathing is gonna be in a seated position. And they're gonna sit nice and tall, relax their shoulders down the back. And you'll remember that at the very beginning, I said that when we are feeling locked in our diaphragms, Oftentimes, the shoulders can have a tendency to rise, and that's one of the first things that's an indication to me as a teacher that my students are maybe feeling short of breath or muscle tension or not breathing to their full potential. So they'll inhale. And of course, this might be an exaggeration, but for some people, it's not. And it's just something that we do unconsciously. And oftentimes, you know, as things get harder in a yoga practice, we have a tendency to hold the breath and just stop breathing at all. And so we're gonna work away from that direction. So the second person is going to stand behind the person sitting down. And they're going to bring their fingertips or hands just above the tops of their shoulders. And then from there, they're just gonna lift the fingertips, maybe a centimeter or two. You want to give a little bit of room that the shoulders may rise naturally, just a subtle amount. But what we want to account for is anything that seems like a very exaggerated, like multiple inches of shoulder elevation. So what we'll do is we'll have the second person just hover their fingertips over their shoulders. And then we'll ask the person who's practicing their breathing to find their breath. And you can use whatever technique, whether it's hands-on belly breathing, visualizing breathing into the belly. I want the student or practitioner who's breathing to think about sending the breath down and out versus up and in. So as they breathe, they're gonna try to focus their attention and not letting the shoulders rise into their partner's fingertips. And this can be sort of a frustrating process at first because it's gonna happen. Your shoulders are going to tap your partner's fingertips and that is probably the most common response to this exercise. 
But over time, you can start to sort of measure progress and you'll have someone there giving you feedback, helping you to guide you with your posture and also helping you to stay focused on the task at hand. So it's really nice. I think sometimes we get a little bit motivated by our friends. And if we know someone standing over our shoulders and we really want to make the aim of our practice to breathe in a way that supports the diaphragm muscle and its natural uh, function and actions, then I think that this can be a really fun exercise to do. And you can always ask your teacher to do it with you as well. Maybe after class, they might have a new perspective that's informed in a way that could even be more beneficial. So these are just a handful of ways to reinforce your breathwork practice. And you know, it's just reaching the surface, but I hope that they're a great foundation so that you can build upon that. You can get into some of those more uh, nuanced breath techniques that we practice in yoga or pranayama techniques to sort of extract the prana from the breath but first having an ability to take a quality breath into the body itself. So again, I'm Jenny Kleiss, and I'm really happy to have gotten the opportunity to share some of these techniques that I've felt helpful with you, and I hope that you all enjoy this video. Namaste.